Okay, welcome back to Decrypted Tech. Today we're going to be taking a look at Intel's offering into the Z77 Arena. This is the pretty much the basis on what everybody works from. This is their genuine Intel desktop board, the DZ77GA-70K. It's part of their Extreme series. Of course, you know, the front of the box has their nice skull design, which we've come to know and love ever since the Skull Trail, uh, you know, era. And we got some information on the front. Of course, uh, with the advent of malware and the big push for that and seeing a lot more of the botnets including some of that have attacked the, uh, the even the Macintosh world we'll see that here on the front we've got one of the nice features uh, there including McAfee I don't know if you're a fan of McAfee but, and I'm not exactly sure if that's a feature or a bonus for you but it is nice to see that a lot of motherboard manufacturers are at least offering something for those people that might not have their own solution that they bring in, in with them so looking along the size we see that uh, this is designed for the Core i7 series. It is an LGA1155 processor socket, so it's going to support Sandy Bridge as well as Intel's third generation Core i7 CPUs. It's optimized for the Intel K processors. It has their Visual BIOS, Smart Response, PCI Express 3.0, which uh, you won't see a whole lot of benefit from that until we see the third generation Core i7s hit the market. But it's nice to see that it's there. It also has USB 3.0 that's included, and you have a, a front panel module which we'll show you here in just a minute. Let's take a look at the back. You get a nice uh, visual of the board there. It shows you everything you need to see, you know, the layout, what the board's going to look like. It does include a wireless Bluetooth or a Bluetooth and a Wi-Fi 802.11n module. Plugs in via an onboard USB connector. So another thing that we want to talk about here which you'll get a good image of or a good picture of later is the Intel Visual BIOS. Uh, this is the UEFI BIOS, it's Intel's version of it, so it's, uh, we're really looking forward to see exactly how that works out. Um, hopefully, it's a lot better than what we saw in some of the first generations of the UEFI BIOS. Some of those were a little clunky. Alright, that covers what we've got on the back here. Oh, actually wait, we do have one more thing, we've talked about this quite a bit. And that's going to be that Virtu MVP. This is a huge feature that we're going to see included with each and every motherboard, uh, Z77 motherboard. This is the ability for you to continue to use the AVX, the advanced vector extensions, and the parallelism of the uh, internal graphics processor on this CPU to continue crunching those numbers for things like transcoding, video encoding, audio encoding, all of that. So you're going to get the performance benefit from that as well as still maintain that high frame rate from you know, whatever add-in card that you put in here. Now, we will discuss a little bit more in detail the Virtu GPU on its own. We're going to take a look at exactly what it does and what it does not bring to the table when you're using this. Um, you're going to have some features that uh, you might surprise you as well as might be disappointing, but that's for an entirely another article and we'll talk about that a little later. So now that we've seen the outside of the box, we're going to go ahead and get it opened up and we're going to take a look at what comes with it and also what the, some of the features and uh, component choices as well as the design of the board. Okay, we've got everything out of the box. Some things are a little bit light. Um, again, this is an early sample of the board, so we do not have the final print manual. We also don't have the final print d uh, driver's DVD, but those will be included in the box, obviously, when, you, when these are on the retail shelves. So let's take a look. You have your I.O. panel, which has your dual LAN, your USB, everything else. It's pretty nice. You know, it's typical, not, not that big of a deal. You have an SLI bridge, which can also act as a crossfire bridge. You have the... USB, Wi-Fi, and USB dongle that we talked about. This is actually pretty cool. You just stick this in there. This is your cable that will run back through the system. And uh, you can actually pull this piece of double-sided tape and stick it on the, uh, on, the board, on the side of your case. Again, there's that USB 3.0 front panel that we talked about. It's pretty nice. It connects to a USB 3.0 header that's on the board. This is the cable that you get that's meant for that uh, Bluetooth and wireless dongle. And you get a nice little mouse pad in there which has Intel's uh, skull symbol on the top of it. We've actually got a couple of these. They're pretty nice as far as the size of them. You can get a really good movement with it. And they also stick to the desk really well. Alright, so now that we've seen exactly what comes inside the box, we're going to get the board ready for you. Alright, so here's the board. We've got the DZ77GA7K motherboard laid out here for you. We'll take a look at some of the features. Uh, again, this is a full ATX motherboard, so it's going to fit into a standard size case. It's not like some of the small form factor ones we've been looking at, the mic micro ATX side of this. which Those are fun to use. Uh, some of them can actually be pretty uh, powerful as far as performance. We're going to start off here at the upper uh, side of the board, and we're going to take a look at the RAM and the CPU area. 
All right, you can see that it's pretty simple. Again, you have your LGA 1155 socket. It's going to be a load socket for those of you that are keeping track of that kind of thing. You're going to have your standard four RAM slots. Uh, Intel has thrown on some uh, onboard power controls, turn these on and off. Uh, that's pretty much expected. It's, it's sort of a, a common feature now. You have your 24 pin power port. You have a couple of four pin uh, power you know, headers. You have a fairly decent uh, heat sink here that's going to be on top of your voltage regulation system, uh, probably for the RAM here. You also have a series of LEDs. These are going to light up depending upon the power usage. Your 8 pin auxiliary ATX power uh, port is right here. It's pretty nice. It's clean. It's out in the open. You can reach it. And then, of course, you have your larger. Uh, heat sink for the major portion of your power regulation system there. Let's flip it around and take a look at the lower half of the board. And we'll see that you have two PCIe ports here. One is going to be the full generation 3 PCIe X16, electrical as well as mechanical. You have a couple of uh, X1 slots, you have an X4 slot there, and you have two standard PCI slots. These are going to be PCI 2.1 slots. And those are thrown into the mix as well. Flipping over to the back, what you'll see here is you'll see that you have two, these two slots, those two X16 slots, both of those are fully X16. You can see that right here. And you have your X1s and of course your X4 there. So that's uh, one of the easiest ways to tell if you're going to get the full you know, benefit of that. Now these slots, when you are running multiple uh, you know, graphics cards in here, they're going to blend off and you're going to end up with X8, X8 across this SLI. You're not going to get the full X16. And again, that generation 3 is not going to come to you until you have that third generation Core i7 processor in there. Look at the bottom here. Along the bottom you have some additional LEDs, another fan header, uh, 1394 port header, and then you have two full USB 3.0 headers, both of these right here. So you can use either a back header or a front header to get just some more USB 3.0 ports on the board for you. The orange port here, that one is actually for the uh, that wireless controller that we showed you. That's going to give you your power and everything else that you need for it. So, you know, that pretty much covers everything. You have your diagnostic LED. Of course, you have a couple of, uh, you have some SATA 2 and SATA 3 ports as well as an external SATA 3 port. This is going to be run by a different controller, not the PCH. And now let's take a look at the, the back. All right, the back for the I.O., you have a couple of USB ports, you have a PS2 port, you also have a Firewire 400, a couple of more USB ports, an eSATA port, um, you have a couple of uh, USB 3.0, dual Intel NICs, you have your HDMI port right there, as well as your traditional audio system. You know, the board is not, it's not a great board, but it's also not a bad board. It's very good for its market offering and also pretty much as an indication of what the stock or reference design is for the Z77. This board is going to give you a good idea of, of what type of performance you should have, the kind of stability you should have, you know, in comparison to other products that are out there on the market. So again, that covers pretty much the Intel offering for this board. We've seen Intel boards give us some good uh, results before, and we're looking forward to seeing exactly what this can do for us as we move into uh, coverage you know, with both Sandy Bridge and then hopefully with the third generation Intel processor. So as always, if you like this video, go ahead and click on the like button. Be sure to share this if, uh, you know, with the rest of your friends. And as always, subscribe to our channel so you can keep up to date with the news and reviews we have for you.